so good afternoon guys hope all of you are safe safe from corona okay uh, welcome to lecture number 14 of uh, cloud computing course today we will be talking about uh, a manifesto for future generation cloud computing research directions for the next decade uh, just checking once the panopta is working okay so come back to the lecture so this lecture is based on uh, a paper, a manifesto for future generation cloud computing. Okay, so this is published uh, recently in uh, ACM Computing Service, of course, in 2019. I co-led this work with Professor Rajkumar Buya from University of Melbourne. Uh, it was uh, the paper was contributed by 25 excellent uh, researchers from uh, across the globe. Okay, so there are from uh, different universities, say for example, like Imperial College London, Western Sydney University, University of Melbourne. Okay, of course, also enterprises like uh, Hewlett Packard and uh, IBM. Okay, IBM Research, Brazil. So, cloud computing as a paradigm has revolutionized the computer science, uh, computer science origin. So, we have been discussing this as part of this course. Okay, so it has enabled the emergence of computing as the fifth utility. Okay. And uh, thus it emerged as the backbone of modern economy. Say, for example, today it can provide like subscription-based services as long as you can pay for them, okay? So based on pay-as-you-go model. So the cloud computing actually has instigated shorter establishment uh, times for startups, which we have discussed as part of the course, okay? And uh, it has instigated creation of uh, scalable global enterprise applications, okay? Scalability we have discussed thoroughly as part of one of the lectures, okay? And cloud computing also has instigated better cost-to-value associativity for scientific and high performance computing applications okay so this also like we have discussed in detail okay uh, then uh, it has instigated uh, different invocation and execution models for pervasive and ubiquitous applications so for example like we talked about mobile cloud and how and where it will be used okay and uh, last week like we also have discussed about fog computing model okay so for example really cloud computing at the edge of the uh, edge of the networks so this is about cloud computing. There are different types, basic service models which are offered, okay, which we have thoroughly discussed, infrastructure as service, platform as service, and software as service, okay. At the infrastructure as service, people mainly uh, focused at uh, data center management, hardware virtualization, containers, and software defined networking, okay. So people mostly focused at that one in terms of research as well, okay. At the platform as service is concerned, people looked at application development and delivery, okay and resource management systems, okay, and then like multi cloud management, okay, so these are the things people focus uh, from the platform as services. Uh, and then like uh, at the software as services, people try to develop uh, different uh, enterprise applications, okay, and uh, recently like uh, uh, cloud is also extensively being used for other applications, something like IoT based applications, okay, and also for uh, social networking applications. Uh, of course, along with this one, like cloud community has looked at other aspects like security and privacy, cloud economics, of course, like uh, software defined environments, okay, across these data center networking, etc. Okay, so we'll be talking about all these things as part of this uh, lecture. These basic models, the IAS, PaaS, and SaaS, have advanced further and new ones have emerged. We already have discussed, like today, like literally everything is provided as services, okay, so we already talked about XAAS, okay, everything being a service, okay. Along with these developments, cloud technologies themselves have advanced a lot. Say, for example, like significant advances that are there in virtualization. Today, we see the containers and etc. Okay, and as I already mentioned, like uh, cloud is being extensively used by different emerging applications, something like IoT and social networking applications. Okay, so all these advances, basically, like with all these advances, we really need to reevaluate the models and the research strategies which we have already uh, taken. Okay, so the research which was done for earlier application has to be a little bit advanced for the coming uh, emerging technologies as well as for emerging applications. Okay, that will give the scope for this uh, future generation cloud computing. Okay, so we will talk about uh, this manifesto, what this manifesto proposes, and then so and so. So, as far as the structure of the manifesto is concerned, it basically discusses major challenges in cloud computing. Okay, so it uh, investigates the state of the art in addressing all these challenges and then like it also investigates the limitations of the state of the art okay and then like it discusses about emerging trends and impact areas that actually further drive these 
these challenges and the research which is being performed as far, part of the cloud computing domain is concerned. Thus, the manifesto also offers comprehensive future research directions, okay, which can be taken by the uh, researchers. So, in terms of the major challenges in cloud computing is concerned, okay, so there are challenges at the scalability and elasticity level for resource management and scheduling, for reliability, sustainability, heterogeneity of the devices, interconnected clouds, okay, and empowering resource constrained devices, and uh, security and privacy concerns are there. Economics of cloud computing is also a major challenge. I mean, like a lot of research has happened and then like still there are uh, uh, further challenges which are to be addressed. Also in terms of application development and delivery, data management, networking, and usability. As part of this uh, lecture, okay, so I'll be addressing all these challenges, okay, so one after the other, okay, and let us proceed further. So the first one is scalability and elasticity. Cloud computing promises virtually unlimited computational resources. As much as you want, you can actually get them, okay. So this virtually unlimited resource capability basically brings us two benefits. One is scalability. So now you can basically say, for example, unexpected peaks in computational demand do not break the service level agreements anymore. You can provide more resources and then like you can actually adjust to the scalability, okay? You can scale your system in such a way that you can actually handle it. That also brings the other benefit, the elasticity. Users do not have to make uh, any significant upfront commitment cost, okay? So basically like uh, you don't have to put uh, your infrastructure readily available, okay? Rather like as your uh, needs increase or decrease, like you can rather grow or shrink your uh, computing infrastructure, okay? So this is also one of the major benefit uh, uh, with this uh, elasticity. So the state of the art in this domain is concerned, people mostly focus that models for auto scaling, scaling policies, resource provisioning policies. We have discussed these things in detail as part of one of the one of the lectures. Okay, so we know what are the background information there, what is the state of the art there in detail. So, in terms of the challenges is concerned, okay, uh, of course, again, like looking in terms of research challenges associated with uh, scalable uh, services is concerned, cloud providers must embrace parallel computing hardware. Say, for example, today, like we have uh, multi-core uh, systems, clusters, accelerators, okay, say, for example, GPUs, tensor processing units, and then like non-traditional uh, architectures are also coming, okay, into existence. Say, for example, like this neuromorphic computing and future quantum computing will be coming. So, all these, uh, say, for example, this sort of heterogeneous uh, hardware has to be abstracted somehow, and then like you have to provide virtual machines and containers on all this sort of infrastructure for the user to basically be able to use it. That's a major challenge at the hardware level is concerned. Then at the middleware level is concerned, we have to develop, say for example, programming models and abstractions, okay, which are which actually help uh, at this layer. Okay, and then at the application level, new scalability algorithms and models have to be developed. These are still uh, further challenges which have to be addressed. More or less like, uh, uh, the scalability of the cloud itself is limited by the extent to which like its individual components can scale. Say for example, it's computational resources, the storage and network, how uh, interconnects and how they actually can scale. Say for example, like uh, very soon we will be seeing the end of uh, scaling of Moore's law. Moore's law basically predicts like uh, uh, doubling the number of transistors every 1.5 years, okay? Sometime soon like we will uh, end, we will come to the end of that law, okay? So we need to focus at this sort of research in new technologies. Say, for example, we may have to go beyond these metal oxide semiconductors, okay? For memory, like uh, new non-volatile technologies are being explored, okay? So, of course, this is a state of the art. These are the challenges which are already existing. People are investing a lot of time into these things, okay? And in terms of the research challenges associated with the elastic services are concerned, uh, we should be able to, we should have the ability to accurately predict these sort of computational demand. Okay, well in advance, okay. And then like uh, research should also focus at dynamic creation, mobility and garbage collection of virtual machines and containers, okay. Because like uh, at the same time, we are also thinking about all these sort of different uh, uh, computing hardware, okay. Heterogeneous computing hardware is concerned. So we have to worry about all these things. And we also have to develop programming models that enable dynamic uh, reconfiguration of applications. So these things are lacking. So still there are challenges, okay. These are to be addressed. 
So that's about the state of the art and uh, the current existing challenges in terms of scalability and elasticity is concerned. Now comes the real interesting part. Okay, there are several emerging trends and impact areas which are coming around in cloud computing. These things have a significant impact on cloud computing as well, and these things sometimes positively affect whatever the current research which is already being performed in that particular domain. Say, for example, in this case, like scalability and elasticity. Okay are like they may even provide us new opportunities okay they may throw new challenges okay they may give us new opportunities to be able to address these things let's try to look at some of these emerging trends say for example containers have come this is new type of virtualization technology they are really fast okay they have very tiny memory footprint okay they consume lesser resources okay so they are really fast okay so of course, like they are extensively being used uh, in the cloud computing a lot. Okay, then came this fog computing, computing at the edge of the network. We have extensively discussed fog computing. Okay, during last week, le last lecture. Okay, then there is this big uh, big data challenge. Okay, so already big data itself is a challenge, but with the emergence of new type of applications like these IoT and social networking applications. The amount of data which we are generating, also the streaming data which we are generating is escalating like anything, okay? So all this data has to be properly handled, processed, stored, okay? So you need to extract information out of this, okay? So that's again, um, uh, of course, an emerging trend and line, like it gives new opportunities and uh, at the same time, like throws new challenges. At us. Then comes the serverless computing. Of course, like recently, like serverless computing became very popular, okay? Again, we have discussed this as one uh, part of one of our lectures, okay? So this is about an architectural pattern where the server is abstracted away from you and the resources are automatically managed for you and you don't even uh, own the resources anymore. Now you are not renting the cloud uh, virtual machines, uh, say for example, an hour, okay? And then like doing your calculation. Rather like you will call a function or, or like you will start a container, something like a microservice and you run it and uh, you are finished with the task and then like you return the container immediately and all we will be charged is for a few hundreds of milliseconds, okay? A new type of uh, architectural pattern has come into existence, okay? Then there is this uh, software-defined cloud computing. So this is about optimizing and automating the cloud configuration and adaptation uh, by acting, extending this virtualization technology to compute storage and network. So somehow like you will have a complete view, I mean like with the software-defined networking, like you will have a, a controller which will actually take care of the complete network okay of course so then there are also other developments something like blockchain technology say for example this is distributed immutable ledger deployed in a decentralized network and then like this relies on uh, cryptography to meet uh, this sort of security constant and of course like uh, other another huge emerging trend is machine and deep learning okay so and uh, algorithms and models uh, which are basically used for optimizing resource management, okay? And then like machine learning services are also being offered from the clouds, okay? So there are a lot of developments happening. So these are the emerging trends. Now coming back, we had this, uh, we were talking about this scalability and elasticity, the state of the art and challenges. Now what is happening and how these emerging trends are actually affecting, okay? Uh, are like they, they will be driving these future research directions. So let's try to look at that. As we were talking, we will be seeing special purpose clouds for specific functions, okay, in future. So we should be doing a lot of research about that one. Say, for example, for deep learning, like we may have a cloud which is purely based on convolutional neural networks, etc. okay. Cloud providers are already offering uh, accelerate, uh, accelerator and special purpose hardware. Say, for example, Amazon is offering these GPUs, okay, and Google is offering those uh, tensor processing units, okay. So basically, like, uh, we will be seeing a lot of these special purpose clouds for specific functions are concerned, okay? When we are thinking in terms of these uh, specific hardware, we need to develop appropriate virtualization and programming abstractions for them, okay? Say, for example, like enabling just-in-time compilation and optimization for that particular, okay, for that particular hardware. So for that particular special purpose hardware, okay? Along with these things, like we also have to work with uh, 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 appropriate economic models. Say, for example, like uh, how different services can be provided as microservices. Okay, so and then like how you can actually compose them. Okay, so again, these things will affect in terms of scalability and elasticity. Say, for example, like uh, if uh, we have provided some sort of services, say for example, for image processing and video processing as microservices, 
And then like these things are composed with other applications. What will be happening to the economic models of it? Okay, we have to develop all these things. Uh, in addition to address, say for example, like large scale uh, communication intensive applications, for the cloud provider investments are required, especially uh, to support like uh, high throughput and low latency networks. Okay. Along with this one, we also have to uh, do further research in terms of decentralized scalable distributed algorithms for edge computing. Say for example, right now, like we are looking in terms of purely about say for example, uh, to auto scale the an enterprise application. So for example, as the load is actually increasing uh, into the application, so you will be adding more servers to it. But now think about the edge computing or fog computing scenarios. So you have, uh, uh, basically like resources at all layers. Okay, so at these sort of gateway layers, fog layers, and etc. And say for example, like if you have a distributed algorithm, and then like if you are worried about the scaling of it, okay, where do you add the additional resources? How do you add the additional resources? Okay, not just uh, this is relevant for edge computing, but also for hybrid computing and inter, inter clouds. If a, a distributed application has to scale across uh, these infrastructures, how do you deal with them? Okay, so we need to develop new models and new algorithms for those things. So that's about the scalability. Now let us look at uh, resource management and scheduling is concerned. Modern cloud data centers contains hundreds of thousands of uh, computing and storage devices. These things actually host complex applications and uh, the relevant data for that one. So effective resource management and scheduling policies are important to achieve high scalability and operational efficiency. Okay. So this is a, a critical problem for that one. Okay, of course, like we have to take care uh, of all these things. Infrastructure as providers mostly providers mostly rely on, say for example, static uh, virtual uh, VM provisioning policies. Okay, say for example, like uh, since uh, this lecture uh, is also for the students. Okay, so let's try to see. So I try to. Uh, okay, so after last week problem. In drawing something, I try to find some solution. Okay, let's try to use this as our whiteboard. Okay, great. So what I was talking about is like uh, static virtual machine provisioning. So the idea is generally like you will have this sort of uh, physical infrastructure in the cloud. Okay, so basically like uh, you will have different machines. Okay. And now the point is like you are trying to provide access to these machines using virtualization technology. So you are basically providing virtual machines. Assume like uh, each of them is like uh, 16 cores, okay? And uh, say for example, uh, it has 32 GB memory, okay? For example, so that means like it can support up to four large instances, example, for, um, just for the sake of example, okay? So for example, each one is uh, having like a quad core machine, four cores, okay? Four large instances. It can support each with four cores and eight GB memory. Now the point is, if I have to provide, uh, say for example, using static virtual machine provisioning policies, okay, what I can do is like, say for example, if I need to uh, provide, uh, say for example, some uh, five instances to someone, I can start, uh, say for example, three virtual machines here, and say for example, one virtual machine here, and one virtual machine here. Okay, so that's about the uh, static, uh, uh, infrastructure, I mean, like that's how like infrastructure as service basically uses it. Okay, so it is dynamically uh, using static virtual machine provisioning policies. Okay, so it is trying to provide like that. Okay, just a second. Okay, coming back. Now the point is, there can also be like this uh, dynamic virtual machine provisioning policies. So, for example, like which actually relies with, uh, say, for example, uh, virtual machine migrations and all the things, like it may actually take care of these. Now, think about the situation. Now, if you really look at our cluster, okay, in terms of uh, usage is concerned, we are not efficiently using our resources, isn't it? So, basically, like uh, if uh, if we consider the dynamic uh, uh, resource management and provisioning is concerned, say for example, like this uh, node is decent, uh, busy, okay, at the decent level. But these two, like say for example, you have only one virtual machine. Now the point is, you could actually migrate this virtual machine in this machine number three, 
and in fact actually you can move it to here okay that's about live migration why would you do it okay so basically the idea is if you are really worried about conserving the energy the point is the moment like you actually migrate this virtual machine here you can turn off this machine and this machine is also idle you can turn off these machines so in fact actually you are saving a lot of energy for this one for the whole uh, cluster of course this is a simplest example but then like if you think in terms of like a huge data centers the, uh, the way like we are talking here about hundreds of thousands of devices you will save huge amounts of energy of course like we'll be talking about uh, energy and sustainability as well down the line in the coming slides okay so this is about uh, infrastructure as uh, uh, service okay providers basically rely on uh, static virtual machine policies and dynamic virtual machine uh, bm provisioning policies okay let's move back to the presentation okay great in terms of the policies available at the platform as service and software as service are concerned okay uh, there is a lot of research which has gone into auto scaling techniques okay and resource throttling methods say for example to handle uh, workload bursts okay and trends say for example like uh, if a lot of load is coming like you can uh, kill certain virtual machines and then like you can uh, uh, of course to handle this load like you can actually throttle these things and of course like uh, there is a lot of research has gone into admission control methods so the admission control methods uh, say for example to handle peak load and uh, to prioritize workloads okay say for example uh, high value customers come in like you would like to prioritize these things okay so again like resource management policies and schedule for that one so if somebody is ready to pay more then you will actually give them higher priority so that like when your clusters are really busy even then still you will be able to allocate some resources for them okay of course then you are threatening somebody else okay who is paying less of course like you still have to stick to your service level agreements but then like the people have studied different models for these things and of course like a uh, lot of research also has gone into this sort of service orchestration and workflow schedulers especially to handle these uh, scientific workflows and so on okay so different solutions have been studied now, in terms of the resource management and scheduling challenges are concerned, existing policies tend to be intolerant to, say, for example, like inaccurate estimates of resource requirements. Okay, say, for example, like, uh, uh, so we need to study like novel trade offs between policy optimality and its robustness to inaccurate workload information. Okay, so this is a major challenge there. And also like resource management uh, policies tend to focus on optimizing specific metrics and resources. Okay, say for example, like the policy will be uh, only focusing at uh, CPU uses and then like the nodes. Often a systematic approach to coexistence in the same environment of multiple control loops is still a major challenge. Okay. And uh, we still have to develop uh, proper resource management and scheduling methods for uh, hybrid clouds and federated clouds. So hybrid clouds where, where you have some infrastructure acquired from some private clouds, some infrastructure acquired from public clouds. How do you basically take care of the resource management? Say, for example, uh, if you have to schedule any task there, how do you schedule and where do you schedule? OK, so all these are major challenges. There are also still uh, risks related to interplay between security and resource management. And uh, think about the situation. Say, for example, that, like now the resources you are managing in federated clouds or something, there is like uh, almost most of these requests are going across these networks, okay? So which actually lead to a lot of uh, security issues. So these things again become a major challenge. So these things are to be studied. Again, not just these challenges, the emerging trends again push uh, further challenges and further research opportunities, okay? Say for example, like uh, now thinking in terms of how computing is concerned, you need to have, say, for example, cooperative resource management between centralized CDCs and distributed edge computing resources for real-time processing. Okay, say, for example, uh, let us try to see from uh, a, a diagram again. Okay, okay. So basically, what we are talking here is about fog computing, isn't it? The fog computing, the fundamental idea we have already discussed. I am just uh, trying to. 
uh, put the architecture again. So basically, like you have your cloud here, okay. And uh, say, for example, all your uh, network uh, switches, rotors are there, okay. So of course, like you can have several layers of them, okay. And then, like you have your gateway devices, okay. So mostly, like Raspberry Pis are, uh, uh, of course, again, like you can have your own uh, private cloud infrastructure also available here, okay. So any of these layers, and to which like all these sensors are connected. Now the point is like uh, if you are trying to send a task to the gateway, the gateway has to basically coordinate about all the resource management for all the things. Now the point is, if you if the task is big enough, you may have to use some of the resources from the fog computing and some more resources from the cloud computing as well. Okay, so how do you cooperatively manage these resources? So this will be a tricky challenge. Okay, so. Uh, we need to find uh, different models, methods, algorithms, and solutions for these things. Okay, so that's again a major challenge there. Okay, moving back. Of course, like we also have to find uh, novel scheduling methods for this sort of distributed and heterogeneous environment. Say, for example, if a task has to be scheduled, if it has to be divided, we already discussed last week. Like the task can itself be a, a DAG. Okay, how do you distribute the subtasks across these uh, distributed and heterogeneous environments? Okay, that's again a major challenge. Okay, that's from the uh, new uh, challenges and new research directions from the fog computing perspective. Now think about the serverless computing. Serverless computing also gives uh, us uh, new prospects, okay? Serverless computing offloads the computation far from the application core components. So, for example, like you are trying to invoke a function uh, over the network. So that means like you are adding a lot of network latency. Okay. Uh, and this may actually uh, affect like uh, this uh, function response time. So that's also a critical problem there. Okay. So we need to work with these sort of novel resource man pol uh, management policies to decide when and to which extent like you can rely on the FOSS. Okay. This is again a major research challenge. Uh, in addition to that one, in terms of resource management and scheduling is concerned, both cloud providers and consumers will have their own different goals and constraints, isn't it? So then we have to develop uh, these novel game theoretic approaches and market oriented models for resource allocation and regulation. Okay, so we have to take care of these things as well. Of course, uh, then looking further like uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, can provide us use different types of solutions for these sort of resource management and scheduling challenges concerned. Uh, people are really working with, uh, say for example, like uh, reinforcement learning based uh, resource management, cloud resource management, okay. And of course, like um, large machine learning based models, okay. A lot of people are studying these things. There is still a lot of scopes for future research directions here. Uh, another thing from the networking perspective is concerned, okay. By logically centralizing the network control plane, SDN provides opportunities for more efficient management of resources. Okay, so you will have a bird view through SDN, okay, but through this control plane. The centralized uh, control plane is now centralized. So this gives us new opportunities, of course. Uh, then, like SDF and even orchestration and consolidation has to be taken care, and then, like, we have to develop efficient algorithms which actually can exploit these features in terms of resource management and scheduling is concerned. Okay. So these things are also to be studied. Then let us move to the next challenge, the reliability. So, so basically like uh, coming to the reliability, cloud computing systems face a variety of uh, reliability related threats. Say for example, like you can have hardware failures, resource machine failures, power flow failures, network failures, timeout failures, and say for example, whatever the software which you have developed, okay, you might have tested on certain infrastructure, okay, and certain environment, and uh, the moment like you deploy it in the cloud, because it is on a different uh, sort of hardware and different sort of environment, it can fail, okay. So these are all the reliability challenges, okay. So as a cascade of these failures may be triggered, leading to large scale service disruptions, disruptions with far reaching consequences. I mean like, uh, the companies will fail their SLAs to a large extent. Okay, so that leads to lot of uh, penalties. Okay, so it's a major problem. Reliability has a great impact on the quality of service as well as on the reputation of the service provider as well. Okay, so again, this is a major challenge in cloud computing. 
the best solution to address the reliability is replication and uh, replication of data and computation for example it is based on map reduce and we have discussed map reduce extensively as part of this course okay we have already seen this solution so the how we are actually replicating the data across the cluster and also like how we are actually replicating the computation across the cluster as well okay there are also other solutions something like array coding for uh, data storage say for example you will distribute the data and then like you will encode with uh, additional duplicated data and then like of course there are a lot of interesting uh, solutions for that one which basically come under this uh, array coding for data storage is concerned so reliability in terms of challenges is concerned the standard fault tolerance and reliability approaches which are developed for the traditional distributed systems cannot be directly applied to cloud computing okay the main reason is cloud computing is not resource oriented it's mostly service oriented okay so we have to look at uh, to some extent like uh, different fault tolerance and reliability approaches for this one okay another challenge is like scale and expected reliability are very hard to analyze due to range of interrelated characteristics okay say for example their massive scale their uh, service sharing models okay and the wide area network and heterogeneous uh, software hardware components etc okay these things make it really problematic um, in terms of addressing the reliability is concerned like uh, independent failures have mostly been addressed separately okay uh, however their interplay has not been studied that extensively so this again uh, throws in as a challenge okay so cloud computing environments lack thorough service reliability models automatic reliability aware service management mechanisms and failure aware resource provision policies okay so these are the things which are to be looked at so in terms of the future research directions are concerned one should be mostly interested in how to deliver a competitive service that meets end users expectations and performance reliability and qos quality of service in the face of various types of independent as well as temporal and spatial uh, correlated failures so this is a major challenge okay how to deliver these sort of competitive services there is a major challenge okay of course like uh, we should also be working with innovative cloud services that provide reliability and resilience uh, which can be provided okay uh, as a service so you can think about like reliability as a service so you, you see like one more xas everything is coming as service even reliability can be provided as a service from the cloud okay in terms of other future research directions uh, we need to come out with solutions say for example like uh, for deep learning and uh, machine learning uh used for failure prediction okay say for example when a certain failure may occur okay so these things are to be studied further and failure aware resource provisioning policies are to be studied further and we also have to look for other solutions beyond replication okay replication has been studied extensively of course like we already discussed in terms of map reduce and everything okay so both in terms of uh, computation and also like uh, data replication is possible but are there any other solutions beyond replication okay especially for new type of applications something like iot applications say for example iot devices are already resource constrained okay so if you also put them additional load of replication and all the things it will be a huge challenge are there any other solutions for that one say for example employing both uh, replications and array coding in cloud storage okay uh, of course this is beyond iot applications of course for the big data applications like you should be looking at both replications and array coding okay for iot applications you may have to find newer solutions completely new okay so these things uh, throw further future research challenges and there is also one more uh, problem with this sort of replication so we said like okay so to uh, to address with this sort of reliable challenge like you can replicate the data and replicate the computation so that means like you are employing more nodes for the storage of the data and for the computation we already looked at uh, when we looked at the scheduling challenge okay the point is when you have more machines more machines doing the same uh, purpose like you are consuming more energy so that means like we need to find some sort of correlation i mean like you have to find and work with this say for example the correlation between reliability and energy efficiency so energy efficiency is a very critical problem in terms of cloud computing is concerned okay so let's move on
So that's about the reliability challenge. So since we were talking about energy efficiency, let us talk about sustainability in you know, cloud computing. Cloud data center deployments until recently mostly focused at uh, high performance computing. They have not paid that much attention into energy consumption. Today, cloud data centers consume energy more than most of the countries. Actually, in terms of annual electricity usage, they stand at number five. Okay, they stand only after USA, China, Russia, and Japan. Okay, that's a huge problem. In terms of the state of the art is concerned, this primarily focused to save the energy, primarily focused at consolidation of virtual machines for minimizing energy consumption. I already gave you the example. Okay, so how you will live migrate uh, some of the virtual machines. Okay. Uh, using proper bin packing strategies or so, so that like you actually make some of the nodes uh, fully busy and the free nodes can be turned off. Okay, that's how like you will be saving a uh, lot of energy. Okay, uh, people also have start, uh, studied and then like produced different solutions for ML based uh, methods for task allocations so that like violation of SLAs and operating costs, including energy consumption, are minimized. Okay, people have really looked at these models. And people also have studied uh, models for mixing renewable and non-renewable energy. Okay, uh, say for example, like uh, uh, some of the clouds, say for example, about 30 percentage of energy which they may be using is renewable energy. Say for example, from uh, wind energy or like uh, solar energy, they can be using. Okay, of course, people have already uh, started studying these models. So how uh, it can be used and then like what would be the consequences of it, okay, what would be the problems of it, people have been studying these things extensively. extensively. But still sustainability uh, throws a lot of challenges. So providing online automatic, okay, and self uh, methods to holistically manage both quality of service and energy consumption of cloud systems is still a major challenge, okay. And apart from this one, like, uh, Cooling systems and networks are also another major challenge. Okay, these things are to be optimized by proper scheduling of uh, the traffic flows between the servers. Again, this is uh, also a major challenge in terms of uh, sustainability. Is concerned. And uh, how about rationing the energy supply for the clouds? Okay, let the cloud providers manage the energy availability and then like QAS trade offs. Okay, so how about uh, maintaining that one? Say, for example, I mean, we have to think about all these different solutions. Uh, looking at the scale, like I already said, like uh, the annual electricity uses of uh, the data centers across the globe is much more than many of the countries. Okay, so we need to uh, start thinking about all these sort of wild ideas. Okay, so about rationing the energy uh, supply to the clouds. Okay, so I mean, like these were the things like which were already being looked by the people. Now again, what these emerging trends have thrown extra into the picture? Okay. Um, now, say for example, with these sort of distributed clouds and then like, uh, say for example, uh, data centers across the globe, geographically distributed data coordination, resource provisioning and energy aware and carbon footprint aware provisioning in these data centers becomes a major challenge. Okay. These things require novel system architectures and algorithms for that one. Okay. Uh, that's one future research direction. Okay. And in the other directions, like say, for example, we also have to look about uh, dynamic task scheduling for energy consumption, SLA and QS optimization. Uh, we have to look at, at uh, online decision making solutions and adaptive self aware techniques. Okay, so these are the things which are to be developed. Okay. Uh, in terms of the energy consumption and in terms of the fog computing is concerned, again, like coming back to the fog computing, the basic idea is like we are trying to do the processing as low as possible in terms of the cloud centric Internet of Things hierarchy. So that means like if it can be processed at the sensors, you are processing there. If not at the gateways, if not at these sort of intermediate uh, fog devices, if not, you are moving to the cloud. Why you are actually doing all these things? You are actually trying to reduce the latency. Okay. To reduce the latency, what you are doing is like you are doing the processing on all these sort of edge devices, edge and fog devices. These are actually most often like battery powered devices or like resource constant devices. So that means like you are consuming more energy at this sort of fog level. But at the same time, like you are reducing the amount of energy which you are consuming at the network level. Say for example, if you don't use fog computing, all the data has to be sent to the cloud and there you will do the processing and you will send the results back 
this will also have the energy consumption okay so you need to have this sort of trade offs when it is better to run on the fog computing when it is to better when it is better to run on the cloud computing you need to have some sort of trade offs and you need to have models for these things okay so this is again like uh, a huge uh, research scope okay and the people can look at these things and in terms of the sustainability for the networks is concerned okay uh, okay so we talked about like say for example how at the infrastructure level like how we can migrate these virtual machines and then like we can turn off certain uh, systems okay certain servers but until now we have not seen situations where like say for example we turn off some of the network devices say for example some of the network switches routers like we turn off okay but the thing is like not just saving of the energy if you try to do these things the, uh, say for example turning of the switches and routers these things will disturb uh, aspects such as reliability scalability and performance of the network itself so you should be careful about these things okay and also like uh, the future research direction i mean like future research should be looking at designing like smart energy aware routing mechanisms okay and of course like uh, thinking in terms of the software defined networking so basically global network awareness and centralized decision making offered by this sort of sdn may provide better opportunity for creating sustainable networks for clouds so all these things are to be explored okay that's about the sustainability challenge of cloud computing now let us move further and let us look at heterogeneity this is again another major challenge public cloud infrastructure has constantly evolved in the past decade so it is not like all the data centers have been established at once and then like they bought all these sort of latest devices and then like established they have actually grown over the years already in terms of cloud is concerned we see heterogeneity at several levels one is at virtual machine level even a single cloud provider will give you multiple types of virtual machine which you can use for uh, different purposes okay small instances medium instances uh, high cpu instances high memory instances etc all of different types so at virtual machine level you have a lot of heterogeneity then there is also heterogeneity at the vendor level say for example each vendor may be using different hypervisor technology or different software suites for providing these virtual machines okay and then like there can be heterogeneity at the hardware architecture level itself they may be using different cpus and different hardware architectures so this is again a major challenge okay of course people are already providing these things and then like these these solutions will be offering further challenges say for example in terms of resource and the workload management in heterogeneous environments is concerned still it is challenging to obtain a general purpose cloud pro platform that integrates and manages heterogeneity at all these three levels vm level vendor level and uh, hardware architecture levels okay so this is again a major challenge in terms of the other challenges uh, related to heterogeneity is concerned uh, development of application software is again a major challenge okay if you want to develop software which is compatible for these heterogeneous resources you have to worry about lot of things okay most of the hardware accelerators like uh, which these cloud providers provide have their own programming languages say for example uh, uh, if we think in terms of gpus uh, they are mostly based on coda or opencl so these things actually require like low level programming skills for that one of course you can say like i will employ a middleware which actually abstracts all these sort of hardware accelerators okay and then like you will have generic programming and then like which will be adapted to these sort of specific programming languages but if you do that one these things will actually reduce the opportunities for optimizing the source code for maximizing the performance of these sort of hardware uh, accelerators that was the primary purpose of that okay that's again a major challenge of course for infrastructure as service like adapting certain software uh, specific to that particular uh, uh, hardware accelerator which you have invoked for it is up to the developer to develop such a software okay but whereas for platform as service and software as service the onus actually falls on the cloud provider okay so it's uh, these are some of the major challenges so open's challenge still in this area is developing software that is agnostic of the underlying hardware and adapt and can adapt based on the available hardware okay so still it is a major challenge now these were the challenges already again like the future uh, the i mean like the emerging trends throw further uh, challenges and opportunities for future research directions okay uh, 
we need to develop general purpose cloud platforms that integrates and manages heterogeneity at all the three levels okay so this is still a major challenge okay um, and uh, in terms of looking at other future research directions wider adoption of heterogeneity for service oriented and user driven applications on the cloud okay currently mostly these things are supported only for scientific applications so we have to see like how it can be adapted for other applications okay of course we also have to develop high level programming language for satisfying this abstraction and elasticity okay so we already discussed like by having these sort of higher level languages and then like middleware solutions may decrease the efficiency okay so optimizing efficiency but at the same time like we have to find new solutions for that one okay of course eventually you need to support elasticity on these uh, things okay and there is also a new trend which is coming in this sort of uh, hardware heterogeneity so recently like uh, people are talking about disaggregated data centers traditionally the data center centers are built based on servers say for example you will have racks okay so and then like there are servers lying there so each server basically contributes in the rack will contributes its own uh, cpu its own memory and its own storage so this is the usual way say for example if i have to establish a data center i will bring a lot of racks i will bring a lot of servers and each will contribute a part of it with this disaggregated data center okay each of these individual resources are built as stand alone resource blades so that means like there will be a blade for cpu there will be a blade for memory and a blade for storage and these blades are interconnected through high speed uh, network fabric of course recently um, some of the cloud providers are trying to offer these uh, solutions okay these disaggregated data centers will have significant impact on the way like traditional ias uh, services will be provided okay so in the next years like we will be seeing lot of uh, the cloud services based on these disaggregated data centers so that's about the cloud heterogeneity then comes the inter uh, interconnected cloud cloud providers and platforms still operate in silos okay that's the reality uh, their efforts for uh, integration usually are based on okay their own portfolios mostly okay uh, existing cloud providers already offer certain proprietary mechanisms for interoperation okay so how you can actually connect across multiple cloud providers or multiple clouds multiple data centers etc but these solutions still exhibit limitations as they are not based on any standards are open source solutions okay there are a lot of efforts about standardization of these federated cloud computing say for example nis federated cloud ieee intercloud okay but still a lot of uh, challenges are pending okay so in terms of the state of the art other things which people have looked at is like say for example people looked at uh, application containers and configuration management tools for portability okay say for example as part of this course like we have looked at uh, oss tosca topology and orchestration specification for cloud applications this again falls here you know, falls in the same range so once you have this sort of uh, configuration management is uh, described you can deploy the application on any of the cloud okay and people also have studied the middleware and library solutions for hybrid clouds something like aneka okay so uh, okay so people will have looked at these aspects but still inter interconnected clouds throws further challenges say for example like right now people all the interconnected solutions have always have looked at common denominator okay so now the further challenge is how to go beyond this minimum common de denominator of services and interpreting across multiple clouds okay and uh, when you are talking about uh, multiple clouds and then like interconnected clouds and everything how to coordinate this sort of authentication across these clouds okay how to deal with this access across these clouds and uh, billing across these cloud providers okay they are all the major challenges okay people are already looking at certain solutions but then like they there is still huge scope to do research in these directions okay um other challenges include like uh, say for example the efficient and the transparent provision management and configuration of uh, cross site virtual networks is again a major challenge and uh, developing standard uh, standard interfaces portable data formats and applications and uh, internationally recognized standards for service quality and also like security are again for the challenges in terms of internet cloud services 
So in terms of future research directions are concerned, okay, so along with the offered challenges in, by the effect of these emerging trends, okay, how do you apply interconnected, uh, intercloud solution in the context of fog computing? In the fog computing, like we already said, like certain infrastructure of private clouds, third party providers, and some infrastructure of cloud can be used to do some sort of, say, for example, some uh, large scale data analytics, including also edge analytics at the devices. Okay. How do you apply these inter cloud solutions? So, this is again a major challenge. Okay. And uh, then, like, say, for example, uh, the other challenges include, like, uh, other future research directions include, like, uh, how to enable cloud interoperation middleware that mimic complex services offered by one provider by composing simple services offered by one or more providers. So here we are talking about serverless applications, isn't it? Say for example, uh, services, serverless computing services provided by one cloud provider, okay, so by multiple cloud providers you will take and you will compose these applications, okay, and you may develop such a middleware for that one, okay, so how to deal with all these uh, challenges, okay, so there is huge scope there. And interfaces for such middlewares is also a major challenge. Of course, like if there is such middleware, like you need to find interfaces both for the cloud users and also for the cloud providers. Okay. And of course, like uh, future research should look into, say, for example, novel approaches for billing and accounting, our interconnected uh, cloud sortable pricing models, along with uh, formation of inter cloud uh, marketplaces. Okay. Uh, and of course, like again, the other future research directions include like software defined networks and uh, network function virtualization and all in inter cloud operations, okay. Uh, SDNs and the capability to shape uh, and optimize network traffic, okay, basically for optimization of wide area network traffic, uh, which is connecting the multiple data centers, okay. And of course, like uh, since these interconnect, uh, inter clouds are actually connected through network, okay. That means like most often like they will be going through public clouds, okay? So then uh, say for example, how to enforce like prioritization of uh, service traffic across these cloud providers or data centers? And uh, what are the other specific uh, security requirements which are to be addressed and what are the solutions which are to be looked at, okay? So these are all again like future research directions in that domain. Okay, let's move on to the next challenge which is about this sort of uh, empowering resource constraint devices. Cloud services are not only relevant for enterprise applications, but they are also relevant for uh, resource constraint devices. Say for example, for these mobiles, like last time, like we have discussed like mobile devices have limited capabilities, so they will have huge advantage by uh, harnessing cloud resources from these mobiles, okay, which actually led to this mobile cloud domain. Uh, during the last lecture, like we have discussed these things in extensively, okay, but uh, we also have discussed like there are two different binding models for that one, the task delegation approach, where like it is just like the traditional web service invocation from these mobiles, okay, so you will invoke services from multiple cloud providers. We also have discussed about the model of mobile code offloading, so basically you will profile and partition the application and then like you will try to offload certain methods under particular context, okay, to much powerful surrogates. Okay, so, and then like there are still a lot of challenges open there. Say for example, mobile cloud has been now studied for uh, the past 10 years, okay? How many applications are actually using all these uh, technologies? Okay, still there are major problems with uh, adaptation, okay? So still there are open challenges with in terms of ideal decision mechanisms. When it is ideal to offload, where it is ideal to offload, how we, okay? So a lot of challenges are there. And we also discussed about cloud-centric Internet of Things hierarchy, okay, and cloud-centric Internet of Things based applications as well. And we discussed about limitations in terms of latency and privacy, which actually led to the fault computing in the first uh, sense, okay. So there are a lot of challenges, again, in terms of these empowering resource constraint devices with the cloud is, okay. So in terms of the future research directions here is concerned, we have to, study better models for multi-tenancy in mobile cloud application. Say for example, like uh, in terms of mobiles, uh, if I have to offload anything, okay, if I take a cloud virtual machine for some sort of application here, it will be very cost. I mean, like it cost will significantly increase for that application. Then how about multiple mobiles share these sort of uh, cloud surrogate machines, okay, which are similar to this one and uh, they can be used in terms of mobile uh, cloud offloading is concerned, okay, so that like they can share the cost. 
people have to study these things so future research there are a lot of future research directions here okay and of course like we also have to study about incentive mechanisms for these mobile clouds okay uh, and also like uh, say for example like uh, in terms of the fog computing we said like third party providers can also give their resources why would they basically put their resources we need to give them proper incentives okay so for these independent uh, fog providers of course to basically increase the sort of adaptation of these technologies and last week we also have discussed about like say for example fog execution frameworks okay so in terms of like say for example uh, uh, deploying containers and serverless computing uh, which can be used for this sort of fog execution okay so this is again like uh, uh, has a lot of research scope and then like uh, edge analytics for real time data processing we also have discussed last week okay so that means like the sensors are collecting data and all this data has to be intermediately processed before you could actually send the consolidated results upstream okay to the cloud okay so these tasks include like filtering consolidation error detection etc okay so which are to be explored further okay and uh, in terms of the major challenges in terms of the fog computing is concerned last week we also have discussed about like the self adaptive resource provisioning policies the qos aware uh, application module scheduling in fog topology okay so the qos includes like deadlines priorities okay so optimizing energy consumption resource utilization cost aware etc last week like we have discussed these uh, models as well in detail okay so we have actually tried to shape these problems as multi object optimization strategies okay so which are np hard so we need to find the heuristics and meta heuristic solutions for them okay so during last week like we have discussed them in detail at least three four solutions we discussed okay so this is about like empowering the resource constraint device is concerned then comes another major challenge in terms of cloud computing is security and privacy security is a major concern in ict systems and cloud computing is no exception okay and the security and private management of data and computations in the cloud primarily deals with this confidentiality integrity and availability the confidentiality you can achieve by encrypting the data and storing them on the sort of external cloud providers but these things actually limit the querying abilities for you say for example you encrypted the data and then like you store it on the cloud now next time like you are trying to query that data can't query it directly without even uh, i mean decrypting the data that means like it will be a huge problem again it is it has a huge computational load associated with this one people from the security domain are uh, looking at solutions like say for example defining of indexes which actually enable this sort of query evaluation at the service provider side without having to decrypt the data completely okay but of course like these definitions of indexes must balance this sort of precision and privacy okay there is a lot of research happening there okay and of course like uh, encryption techniques that support the execution of operations as well okay so are to be looked at say for example hard preserving uh, encryption okay that's about uh, the encryption but there are also other issues say for example if the data is operated by multiple people okay uh, different users then you need to ensure like selective visibility for different users say for example like the data uh, people are cooperating and sharing of the data and uh, performing some sort of distributed computations on the data so the security should ensure all these things um in terms of the confidentiality they are also exposed the data is also exposed to attacks exploiting frequency of accesses to violate data and the user's privacy okay uh of course like uh, the solution is to achieve like private information retrieval techniques of course like a lot of research is happening there still it has a lot of challenges to be addressed okay in terms of the security specifically in terms of confidentiality then in terms of integrity is concerned techniques such as digital signatures okay probable data position and proofs for uh, retrievability okay and the detection of uh, unauthorized modification of stored data all these are uh, the techniques which are currently being studied of course still offer like major challenges there uh, and also like when data can change dynamically they have further issues say for example uh, say for example they have to look at authenticated data structures or insertion of integrity checks into that one okay that's in terms of the integrity challenges then in terms of the availability is concerned how the user can select uh, services offered by a cloud provider that actually match user security and privacy requirements in an sla service level agreement 
So this is again a major challenge there. Okay. In addition to this one, hardware-based techniques okay, are also being studied to basically guarantee this sort of proper protection of sensitive data in the cloud. Okay. Say for example, ARM Trust Zone and the Intel Software Guard X. So this is the state of the art which was already looked at in terms of all this uh, uh, confidentiality, integrity, and availability is concerned. Security has further challenges, okay, in general security at the cloud itself, okay, has uh, further challenges. Say, for example, recently like these uh, APTs are coming, advanced basis threats, emerging class of cyber attacks, which are really goal-oriented, of course, like a lot of people backing them, a lot of funding is coming for that one. Some of the examples are Stuxnet, okay, Flame, etc. okay. To mitigate these sort of APTs, a mixture of technical-driven security solutions and policy-driven security solutions must be designed. So this is a major challenge in terms of uh, the security and privacy for the cloud computing. Now comes huge uh, research opportunities with all these emerging trends. Okay. Say, for example, right now, we already have seen like encryption is a great solution to address the confidentiality, but it has certain limitations in terms of querying and all the things. Okay. Can we be able to come out with uh, uh, solutions which are completely departing from encryption? Say, for example, based on splitting of the data among these multiple providers to guarantee a generic confidentiality. Okay. Say, for example, everyone has part of the data when people are computing. I mean, like by joining all the data together, you will come with the actual information. Okay. And then, like you try to in, uh, ensure confidentiality across, and then, like you say, for example. Uh, the guy who is owning part one may not be able to see part two and part three owned by the other people. Okay, so how to come out with these solutions? Of course, people are studying these things. Okay, um, and another uh, challenge is like existing solutions for this sort of query privacy are very difficult to apply in real world scenarios. Again, this is something to be looked at. Okay, in terms of computational complexity, they are pretty high. Okay, and limited kinds of uh, queries supported. Okay, so this is again a major challenge. And in terms of future research directions, we should also be working towards like a definition of a comprehensive framework that allows users both to express difficult requirements, uh, different, uh, different requirements and preferences for the cloud provider selection and to verify that the cloud providers offer services fully compliant with the signed contract. Okay. One thing defining these requirements and again like verifying like those requirements are being supported or not are to be studied. Now again, in terms of the fog computing is concerned, now like say for example, there is no uh, central controls available to check all these sort of fog based executions. So that means like they may raise like privacy and uh, trust issues. So that means like we may have to adapt all the research which has uh, been performed from the peer to peer context. Say for example, requiring um, say, for example, like uh, secure routing, redundant routing, and trust topologies, which were studied in the peer to peer context, are to be applied in terms of uh, these uh, fog based scenarios. Okay, and then, like, uh, we also think like uh, fog induced fragmentation of information combined with the encryption will foster a new wave of uh, cloud security research. Okay, so again, like, uh, this will also give you a lot of uh, future research directions. Okay. But of course, like there are also other challenges. Okay. Say, for example, risk of inferring sensitive information significantly increases with big data. And of course, like with all the IoT applications, the social networking application, huge amount of data is being produced. So that means like this big data, if somebody can infer sensitive information from that one, again, a major challenge. How do you restrict those? Things? How do you address these challenges? Gives you new future research directions. Okay. And the another uh, future research direction is about tracking this uh, big data provenance, where the data has been generated, verifying whether the data came from the trusted sources or not. Okay, that means like more or less uh, should be looking at uh, evaluating the quality of the big data. Okay, of course, uh, blockchain technology, which is another emerging trend, can basically help can be helpful for addressing this data provenance challenge, but it has its own problem. In blockchain technology, whatever the data which is uh, stored, okay, you cannot change it anymore. Okay, that throws in novel privacy concerns. Say, for example, like uh, if uh, any personal data somehow is uh, pushed into the blockchain, okay, can never be able to be changed or it cannot be deleted later. So, huge challenge there. So, people have to study these things further. Now, 
looking in terms of proud academics is concerned so currently like uh, most of the cloud academics and related studies are centered at number of key aspects one is pricing of the cloud services say for example how a cloud provider should determine and differentiate between different capabilities how they have to charge them okay and the brokerage mechanisms say for example enable a user to dynamically search for multiple cloud services okay matching their profiles and predefined budgets and then like restricting to whatever the budgets which he has defined and monitoring to determine user requirements are being met or not and uh, say for example whenever an sla is uh, violated how to identify the penalty so cloud economics study actually as of now has uh, focused at these things of course there are also like uh, certain specifications something like ws agreement okay uh, which actually deal with these sort of implements of uh, implementation of slas okay uh that is something which is already being studied in terms of cloud economic models the other things people have focused is like say for example understanding like how you can migrate your current application okay current in house application and how you can actually migrate to uh, the cloud okay so that uh, has already been studied okay so what are the social and economic aspects uh, related with that one people have studied these things these are all part of the state of the art this is associated with uptime and availability okay and say for example with the migration of the complete application now they don't need that big it departments and system admins of course like uh, these are the current it departments and system admins now will be acting more or less like brokers okay uh, but of course in these senses like uh, the companies how to rely on pre agreed sls uh, with this sort of uh, cloud data centers cloud providers okay that is uh, one aspect the other aspect which was studied especially in terms of serverless computing is like sub second billing okay so earlier like the cloud providers the billing was uh, at about an hour or so okay so now like with this serverless computing and containers like sub second billing has come into existence so these are all these sort of state of the art advances uh, in terms of economics of cloud computing is concerned people also studied about licensing solutions say for example annual or perpetual license or like bring your own licensing for running applications on the cloud and there are also solutions for choosing the right cloud providers okay uh, say for example like um, solutions by right scale plan for the cloud okay cloud market maker etc so these are the things which are using which like you can actually provide like you can find like which is the right cloud for your application and what are the services you should be using and uh, marketplace models were also studied where users purchase services from uh, saas providers and the saas providers in turn in turn will procure this sort of computing infrastructure either from the platform as service or from the ias okay a uh, lot of research has already gone into this uh, thing now in terms of the future research directors are concerned okay serverless computing itself will throw in lot of future research directions for economics of cloud computing is concerned the factors which are influencing economics of serverless functions are like say for example like would you like to charge the same amount for invoking a service in serverless computing always say for example what about the aspects like average versus like peak transaction rates are like scaling and concurrency okay benchmarking on different hardware platforms how to take care of all these things okay these are to be studied further and in terms of the fog computing and edge computing again like uh, there is huge scope for economics okay we already said like uh, third party is can provide this fog infrastructure we can call them as micro data centers we already discussed last week like uh, how to dynamically discover this infrastructure okay this uh, micro data centers pre pre agreed uh, mdc contracts mdc federation okay multiple mdcs collaborate and share workload in a particular area okay and uh, how these things basically will communicate among themselves and then like say for example how do they share the revenue which is actually generated so all these are major challenges there i mean like future research directions <laughs> okay uh, and of course like uh, in the fog computing we also discuss like certain tasks partially maybe run on the fog infrastructure and also partially run on cloud infrastructure okay the filtering and the error detection and all the things happen as edge analytics at the fog layer and then like huge scale data analytics may of the sensor data may happen 
at the cloud layer. In such scenarios, like what about the economic models? So who will take care? How they will share the revenues, etc. So all these things are critical. Okay. And of course, like uh, with the introduction of fog computing, there are a lot of uncertainties. Okay, the fog nodes may be off. Okay, so there is no guarantee. It is not like uh, I can trust Amazon to be existing, Amazon cloud services to be existing more or less 100 percent. Okay, but then, like, say, for example, a local fog service provider. Okay, so uh, the way like we discussed last week, like uh, they can be like a restaurant, okay, which is uh, in the street, okay, which is actually giving you like additional computational capability for fog computing say for example in the evening like it is turned off okay so how to deal with these things so we need to come out with new economic models for that one in terms of the trust issues arising with uh, such uses of fog and uh, these sort of infrastructure okay we have to study them further excuse me gdpr has come into uh, existence recently okay so about two years ago now already and what are its benefits in terms of this uh, trust issues? Okay, so they are to be studied further. We also see like uh, a potential for new players in this marketplace with uh, serverless and edge computing. Say, for example, like now telecommunication vendors are likely to form alliance with uh, these existing cloud providers for supporting real time uh, stream data processing and edge analytics, especially, say, for example, like for uh, autonomous vehicles and smart city sensing scenarios, etc. Okay. So they come uh, in tandem and then like they will be using the service of each other. Okay, so it may throw new opportunities. So these things are to be studied. These economic models are to be studied further. Then comes the application development and delivery challenge. Okay. Cloud computing empowers application developers with the ability to programmatically control both infrastructure resources as well as platforms. Okay. In terms of resource programmability is concerned with this sort of DevOps, okay, so a loser boundary between development and operations, okay, uh, results in the ability to accelerate the delivery of changes, okay. So we already looked at uh, OSS Tosca as part of this course. So a variety of agile uh, delivery tools and model based uh, orchestration languages, okay, they are uh, extensively being adopted in cloud applications, okay. Uh, these sort of tools basically help with uh, automatic lifecycle management, including continuous delivery and continuous integration, application and platform configuration, and testing as well. Okay, so we have already seen these aspects with the OSS Tosca. That's about resource programmability is concerned, and platform programmability is also very critical here. Platform program programmability. Okay, the separation of concerns has actually helped in tackling the complexity of software development. Okay. Say, for example, consider like this MapReduce based programming. The user will only develop, is concerned with uh, writing this map and uh, reduce functions. So, all the other things are actually managed by the infrastructure or the middleware layers deal with these non functional concerns, such as like this parallelization, data locality, optimization, fault tolerance. Everything is taken care of by the uh, runtime for you. Okay. However, that's for the MapReduce. However, there is a shortage of application delivery frameworks and programming models to deliver software for edge computing and, uh, uh, of course, like applications which are spanning across these fog devices and also the CDCs. Okay, so there are no frameworks available there. Okay. Uh, another major challenge is like application evaluation is still a major challenge. Okay. So then in terms of the future research directions are concerned, how to continuously monitor and iteratively evolve the design and quality of cloud applications within the continuous delivery pipelines. So this becomes a major challenge and this gives huge opportunities for future research. And of course, like we also should be looking at to extend existing software development and delivery methodologies with uh, reusable abstractions, especially for designing and orchestrating uh, IoT, edge computing, and big data and serverless computing technologies and platforms. Okay. So, this is another major research challenge, I mean, like future research direction. And uh, infrastructure as a code is expected to grow further. We already have looked at OSS Tosca. Okay. So, this infrastructure as uh, code is going to exist there for quite for some time and it is expected to grow further. Okay. Um, Looking from the serverless uh, computing, okay, for the further uh, future research directions, okay, 
Novel architectures and patterns are required to tackle this sort of uh, cloud application decomposition. Say, for example, like uh, now with the serverless applications, a monolithic application is actually divided into multiple uh, methods which are deployed on this sort of serverless infrastructure. Now they will have additional implications in terms of security, performance, reliability, and operational costs. Okay, securing a monolithic is easy. But then like now with, uh, say for example, greater surface with all these fast functions, you will have greater attack surface. Okay, that's major challenge. Okay. Uh, of course, like uh, uh, the functional level auto scaling, okay, we need to find trade-offs between functional level auto scaling and increased network traffic because like you have to communicate with these uh, serverless uh, functions. Okay. And of course, like, uh, Of course, uh, the ne network charges, okay, so additional network communication you are increasing at the same time, like you will have additional charges, you will have additional energy consumption for all these things, all these things are to be looked further, okay. Of course, like uh, it's also interesting to look at finer grain programming abstractions such as actor programming model. So already like last week we discussed in terms of uh, fog computing, how uh, actor programming model can be used for that one, okay and associated middleware to dynamically reconfigure programs between edge resources and CDCs. Okay, so these are uh, further uh, feature research directions are concerned. Now looking at the next uh, challenge, so the data management. Data management itself is a major challenge. Key selling points of cloud computing is the availability of affordable and reliable and elastic storage, okay, co-located with the computational infrastructure. This was one of the major advantages of cloud computing. A number of storage abstractions were already offered, okay, which are studied extensively, object-based storages, say for example, Amazon S3, and block storage services, something like Azure Blob or Amazon Elastic Block Storages. They basically provide you disk volumes, okay? And uh, high level, higher level data platforms, something like relational DBs, NoSQL DBs, okay? And of course, like there are also proliferation of uh, big data platforms, something like batch processing solutions, Apache Hadoop, based on MapReduce, Apache Spark, we have looked at all these solutions as part of this course, okay? No SQL query platforms for web and enterprise workloads and distributed stream data processing solutions, something like Apache Storm, okay? Uh, sparse streaming solution as well and uh, Heron, etc. Okay? These are some of the data management state of the art is concerned. In terms of the challenges in terms of data management is concerned, services, I mean like as much as we have studied the services for data storage, okay, there are not many solutions for maintaining the metadata of the, uh, of the uh, data which is being stored. Managing the metadata, there are not many solutions, okay. Uh, this metadata will basically allow data to be located and used efficiently. However, like there are not many efficient solutions for that one. Of course, in terms of the data is concerned, data security and privacy remain a major challenges, okay. And uh, with a uh, huge amount of data being produced in IoT applications and the edge of the network, they low latency pro processing requirements, okay? So which actually throw in a lot of scope for the edge analytics, the way like we discussed last week, okay? Uh, and more or less like another major challenge is like uh, big data platforms have limited auto scaling support, okay? So in terms of future research directions for data management is concerned, uh, Lack of uh, tracking metadata describing the source and provenance of the data in data lakes makes it very difficult, okay, very challenging to use them. Actually, scientific repositories have studied this efficiently in, uh, in dealing with the scientific workflows. So how to adapt those things in terms of uh, using them in terms of the cloud managed data as well, okay. And of course, like we can also use blockchains for data provenance, okay. So that is also another future research direction people can look at, okay. Uh, we also have to look at the latency to access the data, okay, so it's a huge challenge. We have to look at other solutions, something like uh, CDNs, content distribution networks, okay, such as AWS uh, CloudFront basically cache the data, okay, at the regional level. Uh, and can we be able to generalize the CDNs at the fog layer, okay, this also throws again future research directions for us. And of course, like uh, there are also other things which we should be looking at. Say, for example, while legal protections exist, 
there are no clear audit mechanisms to show that the data has been accessed by the cloud provider. See, even cloud provider himself may be throwing some of the okay security and privacy related challenges. Say, for example, you are storing the data. How do are you sure like the cloud provider himself has not checked the data? He has not read the data. Okay, can we have audit mechanisms for that one? Okay, that's again a huge challenge. And of course, like in terms of the edge analytics, we already have talked about leveraging computing capabilities of, of network devices to perform in transit processing. Okay, and uh, of course, like we have to uh, look at optimal placement of data processing applications and adaptation of these data flows. Okay, and specialized data management services to support the Internet of Things and deep learning and blockchain technologies, etc. And uh, along with this one, like uh, we should also be looking at efficient management of train models and their rapid loading and switching to support online and distributed analytic applications. This also has to be studied further. So two more challenges pending. Okay. So the networking. This is again a huge challenge. Successful delivery of cloud services require many levels of communication happening within and across the data centers. This networking ensures this communication occurs securely, seamlessly, efficiently, and in a scalable manner. Okay. Both the, the software defined networking and network function virtualization are intended to build this sort of agile and flexible and programmable computer networks. These things can be used by the cloud providers. Okay. Uh, in terms of other challenges is concerned, other state of the art is concerned. Okay, general practice in many data centers is to leave all the networking devices always on. So we already discussed this in terms of the sustainability. Okay, but can we be able to design methodologies? Okay, so that like uh, we can reduce the network energy consumption and still make it possible to, uh, I mean, like, of course, there will be a like certain QoS failures. Okay, but can we be able to manage these things? Okay, and still save certain energy. Okay, it's not a common practice, but people should be looking at them. Uh, more or less like uh, the SLAs of uh, today's clouds are mostly addressed at computation and storage. Looking in terms of the networking level, other than best effort, there are not much many provisions for uh, defining that one. Okay. Say, for example, delay and bandwidth guarantees, etc. Uh, and uh, thinking in terms of inter clouds and multi clouds, etc., networking in CDC will, okay, with the resources existing at multiple sites is really challenging. Okay, say for example, like when we were uh, discussing about interclouds, we already talked, all this data has to go through the internet. Then how do you define the priorities for certain data going between the data centers themselves? There is no way that you can actually ensure it in the regular internet. So the companies are trying to invest, uh, the, uh, they are investing in dedicated infrastructure. Say for example, Google uh, is trying to connect its own data centers by its own networks across the globe. Okay, so these are some of the uh, state-of-the-art solutions and this is what people are looking in terms of networking is concerned. So in terms of the future research directions are concerned, novel set of traffic engineering methods to utilize the available global view of the uh, through this SDN and flow characteristics are patterns. So these things are to be used properly. Okay, So we need to develop these sort of novel traffic engineering methods for that one. And uh, we should also be uh, targeting at techniques, uh, say for example, network performance requirements such as delay and bandwidth or even general guarantees to comply with this sort of quality of service requirements. People have to look for the solutions for that one. Of course, there is a huge paradigm shift uh, brought by this SDN. Okay. Of course, it brings its own challenges. Okay. Now, SDN controller can have the complete view of the network. Now, people will try to target SDNs, SDN controllers. Okay. That's again like... Uh, Use a security challenge. Okay, so people have to look at different solutions for that one. Okay, uh, of course, uh, along with of course, like in terms of SDN, that is again major challenges are there. Okay, future research directions SDN and uh, NF, VNFs. Okay, uh, offer a lot of challenges. But at the same time, looking at other aspects like say, for example, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and big data analytics to address these networking challenges of cloud computing. Okay, and uh, say, for example, to automation of these networks, next generation networks in the clouds. Okay, so people should be focusing at these things. Okay. Uh, 
and also like uh, say for example with respect to fog computing now we are generating huge amounts of data and huge amounts of data have to be transferred so the future research should also be looking at new products and technologies that actually expand these bandwidths are like carrying capacity of the network how to increase these things what are the new solutions which we can look for them okay so these are again like uh, future research directions in this domain now in terms of uh, looking at the usability aspects the human computer interface and distributed system communities are still far from one another that's one reality usability is key aspect to reduce say for example cost of organizations exploring say for example multiple cloud services if you are looking at the usability should be good so that like you can set the right uh, right cloud provider very easily so there are certain frameworks which are coming say for example this cloud usability framework actually highlights five aspects one is capable okay meeting uh, cloud consumer expectations with regard to say for example cloud service capabilities okay and uh, say for example it also deals with the personal aspects say for example cloud uh, services you can adapt the look and feel for yourself okay the user interfaces you can adjust and the other things uh, which they should be dealing is like reliability security and uh, it should be valuable for that having a system that actually performs it functions under state conditions and safely protected and that returns value to the users okay so these are all like uh, uh, critical aspects of this uh, cloud usability framework current efforts in cloud computing to efficiently use these sort of uh, different cloud resources has been mostly at developing appropriate apis okay these apis which can be used by different users okay say for example services to expose high performance computing applications so in terms of uh, future research directions for usability is concerned it is still hard for the users to know how much they will spend renting resources due to workload or uh, say for example resource fluctuations etc so they don't have the exact picture so we need to develop tools to have better estimations and these things will actually improve user experience and satisfaction a lot okay we also have to develop uh, new visualization technologies okay uh, on different layers of uh, cloud environment say for example to better understand the infrastructure and application behavior uh, and highlighting some insights to the end users okay and we also have to look for solutions for easier api easier api management methodologies okay and tools for that one etc and uh, users are still overloaded with okay resource and service types available to run their applications okay say for example so huge number of opportunities are there cpus gpus networks storage operating uh, system flavors and all these services okay are available in platforms then we need to develop proper advisory systems to basically recommend the users okay how they should be using these cloud resources and then like how they can efficiently use these uh, services in their applications okay in terms of other future research direction for, as far as the usability is concerned in terms of cloud computing researchers and practitioners practitioners mostly perform quantitative experiments whereas like uh, research who are working closer to the users they will basically uh, do lot of uh, qualitative experiments and they have deep knowledge about it how to join both the things together and how we can actually drag in this usability Uh, studies and usability experience into this cloud computing domain that offers huge number of future research directions great so these are the major challenges okay so this is the manifest of whatever it is stating so whatever for each of the cloud challenge like what are these sort of different state of the art solutions what are the further challenges remaining so we try to summarize in this figure and the future research directions offered by all these challenges okay are uh, uh, summarized in this second figure okay so for anybody who really wants to quickly have a summary of these things we have the figures for them okay now let me try to summarize all the things okay there will be significant developments across all the service models of cloud computing is concerned say for example there will be developments in ias platform as service and software as service at the ias service is concerned there will be scope for heterogeneous hardware such as cpus accelerator uh, accelerators gpus and tpus and special purpose clouds for specific applications 
there will be huge scope for them and we will be seeing these things in reality in the coming years and future generation cloud should also be ready to embrace these sort of non traditional architectures neuromorphic quantum computing etc okay and the emerging trends such as this sort of containerization sdn and fog and edge computing are going to expand the research scope of ias by leaps and bounds okay that's sure and the sustainability of uh, cloud data centers through utilization of excuse me renewable energy and uh, iot enabled cooling systems we will be seeing them in the near future and there will also be like huge scope for emerging trends in ias such as disaggregated data centers we already discussed them in detail and all the future research directions that are proposed to address this scalability resource management and scheduling heterogeneity interconnected clouds and networking challenges will be released pretty soon and they will have huge impact over how the infrastructure as services will be provided by different cloud vendors okay now in terms of the platform as services concerned we should be seeing like significant advancements through future research directions in resource management and scheduling okay of course uh, they require like uh, uh, we need to develop like new programming abstractions models and languages and systems supporting scalable elastic computing and seamless use of heterogeneous resources okay and uh, we have proposed a lot of the solutions for them okay as part of the manifesto uh, which actually lead to energy efficiency and minimize the application engineering cost better portability guaranteed level of readability and performance okay in terms of uh, other things like machine learning artificial intelligence and deep learning should help in dealing with this complexity heterogeneity and scale and load balancing applications developed through pass okay so they have there is a huge opportunity for them and in time like we will see new solutions okay and the interesting uh, future research directions also also proposed uh, for uh, say for example fast and the serverless computing okay at least uh, say for example functional level uh, qas management and economics for the serverless computing okay so these were already proposed uh, future research directions are also proposed for data management and analytics okay especially say for example from the edge analytics perspective okay uh, interesting applications they will lead to interesting applications in the domains like uh, uh, um, say for example in smart cities and then like uh, autonomous driving vehicles okay with uh, all the real time stream data processing uh, feasible okay with these sort of platforms which will be developed over the time so in terms of the software uh, as services concerned these things should see uh, mainly advances from the application development and delivery and usability of the cloud services concerned and a variety of uh, agile delivery tools and cloud standards say for example something like tosca are increasingly being adopted during cloud application development okay so this this uh, trend will increase further okay and uh, future research should focus at uh, how to continuously monitor and iteratively evolve the design and quality of cloud applications so that will be again a major future research direction okay uh, it also involves like extending these devop methods and define novel programming abstractions to support these internet of things based application edge computing based applications big data and serverless uh, computing applications okay and of course like we should be seeing uh, uh, novel incentive mechanisms okay which will be developed for uh, adopting these mobile cloud applications and uh, for computing uh, adaptability uh, issues will be addressed as well great so these are the different uh, types of changes and then like opportunities which we will be seeing in in infrastructure as service platform as service and software as service okay. so we discussed uh several research directions and uh, these things basically show a promising and exciting future for the cloud okay for cloud computing field both technically and economically okay that's interesting okay so there is huge scope for this and the manifesto basically calls the community for action in addressing most of the challenges which we have mentioned and most of the future research directions which the manifesto actually have proposed thank you very much for your attention as far as the course is concerned okay so this is the last lecture okay so this week there will not be any lab and the next week you will have the examination all the best for the examination okay in terms of the reference is concerned as i already mentioned so this lecture is based on this paper okay so which is published at uh, ac in computing service so exactly with the same title so a manifesto for future generation cloud computing research directions for the ne next decade okay which is published in 2019 Thank you very much for your attention. Okay.